This is going to be my video on my upgrade to the stereo system on a 2018 Yamaha SX210. Uh, right now it's got the stock system in it, um, four channels, and just running off the head unit. So I'm going to keep the head unit, but I'm going to throw an amp in, change the speakers out, and uh, add a subwoofer. So I know I could have gone cheaper when I say this is kind of a budget build. This is um, not the cheapest you could do. I mean, you could get um, some other brands that are really cheap. I try to get something that had a reasonable price, had reasonable reviews, and seemed to work reasonably well. So this is what I ended up with. And um, I'll go over the prices that I paid. First off, I bought, all of this here from Rockville. Uh, this is a six channel marine amplifier. Um, I'm gonna use four channels to run the four speakers in the boat and the other two channels I'm gonna bridge for the subwoofer. Uh, then this was really the best deal. Um, 50 bucks for this install kit. It comes with uh, 18 feet of four gauge marine wire. Uh, plus all a bunch of other stuff too, which uh, it, it, I actually have opened this already and this stuff actually looks pretty good um, This was 50 bucks uh, Again bought from Rockville the amp was 170 bucks and I bought some speaker wire It was a uh, $15 for a 50 foot roll and Then I'm only going to replace two of the four uh, stock speakers in the boat right now um, Obviously, I'd love to get me some JL or whatever, but I just could not drop that kind of money for some six and a half inch speakers so I went with SCAR. Um, oh, I ordered these on Amazon they had 99 bucks free shipping. Um, then I got the bazooka base tube and uh, I got this one is actually in white to kind of go with my boat. It's the 8 inch because the 10 inch would not fit under the passenger seat where I'm planning on putting this. And uh, this is a passive one. Um, I had a hard time finding a deal on this. I actually bought this brand new on eBay for 160 bucks with free shipping. I couldn't find anything anywhere close to that price. So uh, that's what I've got. And I will be going through uh, steps of installing this thing. And by the way, I've never done this before. So um, We'll, we'll see how this plays out. All right, so today I'm going to figure out where to mount the amp at. But before I do that, let's take a look at the amp. Um, again, this is my first time doing anything like this, so I don't have anything to compare this to. I can only tell you my observations of this. So it comes nicely packaged and uh, all your paperwork. Um, I actually have already pulled this amp out. And I have already taken a look at it. Let me get this end up here. Now, yeah. marine amplifier, all right. So on the end here where we have the power coming in, we have this rubber cover, for lack of a better word. Um, I've already played with this. It does not want to stay in place. Uh, I'm not really sure what good that's going to do. Um, there's your power and speaker connections on this end. Now the other end, and it's hard to do this one-handed. Let's turn this up here. There we are. Now this one actually stays in place. It pops in place and um, it's got little plugs here that pull out to, uh, to plug in your RCA jacks. Let me pull this off. So, oop, now the little plugs are falling off. There we are. And there's all your uh, your inputs and your controls and all that. Now, I don't. There's no way this thing is waterproof. Uh, putting this on would definitely help. I will say this. I read some people saying that these amps were uh, just uh, nothing more than a car amp. They had no protection inside. I actually took the bottom cover off of this. The printed circuit board is completely sealed. Um, whatever they've done to either submerge it in something and uh, or whatever, it's a it's like a plastic coating that goes um, all the way across the board and uh, covers pretty much everything. So in that sense, uh, yeah, it's 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 a little protected, but definitely water could easily get in and then that needs to be kept in mind and in, in installing this someplace that's that's fairly dry it's also quite large um, 
was not expecting it to be this big. It's probably going to make uh, mounting it a little bit of a challenge. All right, let's take a look at these SCAR six and a half inch full range marine speakers. First of all, they're nicely packaged. And um, I'm, oops, I've already opened this and taken a look at what's going on in here. Uh, basically, looks like the box. Um, they send you gaskets, a sticker, instructions. But let me show you the template. I really like this. Um, it's actually cardboard. Um, I've already punched this one out. It's not flimsy paper. It's got all your screw holes already um, in it as well. So uh, I like that. that that's nice. And uh, uh, the they give you the screws, which I did check. They are stainless. And here are the speakers. One-handed. So the grill is not removable from what I can tell. They're pretty beefy. They're pretty heavy. So uh, definitely uh, got to be an improvement over the stock speakers I have right now. But uh, we'll see how they sound. All right, let's have a little look at this mess I have going on. So if I haven't said it already in this video, I'm doing this while I'm under a mandatory quarantine. So I can't run to the store every time I need something. I either have to order it or beg the wife to go. So that's not going to happen. Anyway, so I am mounting my bazooka speaker. And let me talk about the speaker first because I saw a lot of stuff online that were like, oh, it's not waterproof and, you know, the cone is paper, it falls apart. Uh, this cone is not paper. Uh, it's it's some sort of hard plastic, I don't know, whatever it is. But it's definitely not paper. Um, the outside does have a coating on it that actually feels waterproof. And uh, I don't know, I'm hoping back here it's sealed up. But anyway, this is meant to be installed on the floor of the boat, car, whatever. But I don't want to do that because A, I got the removable carpet, and B, I don't really want to drill holes in my floor, and um, I'd like it to be kind of up out of the way so I can hose down underneath the seat and all that. So I just chose to suspend it underneath the passenger seat, which is what we have here. Um, I removed it from the boat just to do this. So I'm using the bazooka straps that came with it, but I also am using some plastic straps and that's not what I want. I'd much rather have uh, either a stainless or an aluminum, something stainless preferably. I'm going to figure something out uh, and change this eventually. But for now, um, I think it will work out fine for the time being. I don't foresee this being my uh, forever uh, mount for this. It's, it's just, I don't trust this plastic. Even though right now it is super solid on there. So I'm happy with that. Um, I've got it firing forwards towards the front of the boat. So I've moved it all the way to the back as far as I can so it can project forward. And um, actually the wires are coming out right behind this too. So let me go get this back in the boat. All right, so I haven't talked much about the Rockville uh, Marine Audio Installation Kit. Um, I gotta say, for the 50 bucks this cost, this is a pretty good deal. Uh, you get a 20 foot RCA cable, which I didn't really need. But the, the really, the best thing in this kit is the 18 foot of four gauge um, power wire. I mean, this stuff is, is crazy. It's tinned, it's a lot of small strands in it, so it's super flexible. I mean, you don't have any trouble running around anything. And you can see all the all the strands that are in it. It's crazy. Uh, 18 feet on my 21-foot uh, boat was enough to go from the port side stern where the batteries are all the way around to the helm. So it worked out perfectly. That's where I wanted to put it up front. Um, it also has um, uh, 25 feet of 16-gauge tinned oxygen-free um, flat speaker wire which I did use some of that, a 25 foot remote wire, and um, a fuse and holder. It came with a 120 amp and an 80 amp fuse. I, uh, 120 amp, way too big, I put the 80 amp in it, 
and it came with some terminals and spades and stuff uh, most of which I didn't use and, and ties but the impressive thing is this is this um, power um, cable that it came with 18 foot of it and I'm, I'm really happy with that I couldn't find a deal like that on anything else uh, near that length so uh, impressed with it it's a, to me it's a good deal for the 50 bucks. all right so I've decided on mounting the, the amp right here behind the helm sorry for the lighting here we go in here I'm hoping this is showing up and I cut a piece of vinyl that I had and just attached it there's the piece I know the lighting looks bad but uh, it's about 24 inches by 12 inches and um, I'm gonna mount the amp right here. The only bad thing is it does make this opening here a little bit small. I'm gonna try to slide the amp as far back as I can and leave this space open right here. So, um, but I'm not actually going to mount all this until I get all my wiring run so I can hook the um, speaker wires and the power wires up and then pick it up and mount it to this. If not, it's gonna be, well, I might be able to do it, but it'd be a pain. So, um, I guess, I gotta get to work pulling wires. All right, let me show you what we got going on. Uh, this is end of day one. And you can see my wires are all run up here behind the helm. There's where I'm gonna mount the amp. There's the amp just hanging out. So uh, the big wires here are my power wires and those other wires are the left, right, rear and the subwoofer wire. So they all run. back through here and then through the engine compartment you can see the uh, white ones down there and then the, the power ones run in under there and my speaker ones run in up here and I've got the speaker out and the wire waiting and the speaker out and the wire waiting here so now I'm going to go um, zip tie all of these wires up to the wiring harness that runs along uh, it, it inside of here um, now on the port side there is no wiring harness except for the speaker wire apparently they ran out all the way around also um, I way underestimated how much wire we need I used the uh, 50 foot roll up just doing the two rear speakers and yeah just these two rear speakers I didn't have enough of it to run to the sub, so I had to use some that came with the kit, and unfortunately that was um, 16 gauge, and I ran 14 gauge to the two uh, speakers back here. So when I replace the front speakers, I will probably go ahead and buy more 14 gauge and run new wire back to the sub, which let me show you where that is. Tucked up under the seat. So uh, it's out of the way. Hopefully it's not gonna fall out of there. And I had to drill one hole back here to bring its wire through. I put it up as high as I could and kind of toward the back though. So anyway, so time to clean up the wiring and, um, and then tomorrow I'll start the uh, speaker install. All right, I have got all the wiring run and uh, started wiring the amp up. So I have my um, two power coming in the ground and in between those two, a little remote wire to turn this on. And the white wire is my uh, bridged uh, subwoofer. The two front speaker wires I don't have connected yet because I'm gonna have to uh, put this thing in place to get those, those are a little short. So you can see again my board I'm mounting this to. Let me squeeze back in here so it'll be hard to see. But I uh, cut all the existing I mean, uh, the speaker wires coming off the head unit, cut all those individually, shrink wrapped them, and then put one big thing of shrink wrap over them. Don't want anything shortened out. Um, so, yep, I am ready to mount this thing up and um, get the last two wires hooked up. And then uh, I just gotta go hook the speakers up and cut some holes. All right, amp is in and mounted and completely wired. Um, the uh, interconnects you see here only the bottom one there is actually marine grade uh, the rest of them are not I'm going to be replacing them 
at the time I bought all this I didn't know where the amp was going to be so I didn't want to buy either too long or too short of cables so now I think I'm just going to order three new sets that are probably 24 inch marine grade and uh, be done with it so the amp is upside down but it works out better for me that way um, put all the adjustments and everything right here by the door so if I need to adjust it I can so moving on I just have to cut the speaker holes and uh, finish the wiring on the other end of this all right I'm going to cut the speaker hole I have already done the one on the other side and have the speaker installed came out nice so this is actually a protective film that I've put on here you can use the uh, blue painters tape or whatever uh, it's kind of hard to see it I've got it down here too on the uh, on the seat and I'm using the uh, Dremel and my base is a little broken but it still works fine and uh, this is my first time cutting holes in fiberglass like this and it worked pretty well this time I'm gonna run it uh, with a shop vac uh, while I'm doing it to try to keep the dust down uh, another user on uh, YouTube is using a spray bottle and to keep the bit cool and to keep the dust down which is probably a good idea since I about burnt this bit up but this is over my battery compartment and I really don't want all that water and everything going down in there and having to clean it up so I'm gonna go with shop vac <laughs> All right, let's smooth it out. Test with this. Perfect. All right, I drilled two holes. I'm going to go ahead and install it, and then I'm I like just to drill the rest of my holes afterwards. So uh, let me do that. All right, just for this job, I bought myself a um, crimper, and that this crimper is for the heat shrink connectors, uh, the ones that already have the heat shrink made on to them. This is by a company called Wi-Fi. Um, the crimper I got is, I'm not even going to try to say that name. You can see it there. Works really well. So you crimp these on, then you uh, use a heat gun to shrink it. This particular one also has an adhesive inside of it. So once it, uh, once it shrinks down, it really seals up. So let me put these on real quick. All right, so just insert Strip the wire, insert it in, and it's all color coded. Uh, red, blue, yellow. So this is blue, so I'm going to go in the middle jaw here. Done. Do the other one. Again, go in the middle. And done. Really nice connector. Now I'm gonna heat shrink it. So here's what they look like when they've been uh, heated up. Uh, try not to heat the end of it. It makes it a little hard to get on the speaker connector. But um, this does a really nice job. Really strong connector. And these are also tinned copper. So these are marine grade. 
So now let me uh, let me get this speaker. All right, this is the Rockville fuse that came with the install kit, and basically you unscrew the end, take this cap off. There's a little seal here. Strip about three eighths inch of your positive wire and just put it in here and tighten it down. Now I just have to do the same thing on the other side and um, install the holder and actually hook this to the battery. It's a little hard to see, but I got the uh, positive wired up to my two battery switch. And uh, I know that there'll be many that say you should run it directly to the battery, but I'm not risking my um, amp kicking on and running my battery down. I want it connected to the switch here. And just simply hook the ground up to the rest of the grounds on the house battery. And there's my second battery. So it's time to see if this thing works. All right, so we're out on the water and uh, got some royalty free music here. So I'm gonna see if we can hear it while underway because before you could not hear it at all at full speed or even half speed for that matter. So let's see. That didn't go well. Um, I should have let somebody else on board film, but just let me say this. You can definitely hear it um, full speed and um, no problem at all. In fact, I got told to turn it down. So I am absolutely um, thrilled with it, uh, to be honest with you. But, uh, let me just say one more thing. I haven't showed it all lit up, even though it's upside down. Um, when doing this, when you get everything done, the, uh, it's really important to get one of these things uh, tuned into your, your head unit and your speakers. And real quick, just on the subwoofer, um, you know, there's a lot of equipment to do this, but if you're like me, you don't have it, so you had to do it by ear. So I watched another YouTube video on this. And basically what you would do is, before you even install all this, come to your head unit turn it all the way up and um, turn it up till your speakers distort so uh, in this head unit case it was all the way up it was like 46 was the number I could turn it all the way up it did not distort so I uh, unplugged all the inputs for the front and rear speakers so only the subwoofer would be working and turn this all the way up and turn the um, subwoofer you will either have a gain or level control but anyway turn that all the way down so this all the way up that all the way down then you start adjusting the gain or the level of the subwoofer which in my case is right back here start adjusting it up until well let me back that up the, my subwoofer the lowest response frequency is 39 hertz so there's websites out there that you can go to and um, you can actually get a tone generator uh, on your phone, Bluetooth it to the, the uh, boat, and put out a 40 hertz tone. Then start adjusting your subwoofer level up. And you adjust it up until the subwoofer starts to distort, then you back it off a little bit. And that's you know search around YouTube but until you do that you can either fry your subwoofer or you're not getting out of it what you, you could be getting out of it and it's true for all your speakers too so um, in, in that you pretty much use music so uh, you know just disconnect the subwoofer in the front and do the rear speakers again dial them all the way down turn your head unit all the way up or whatever the level is it would store before and um, adjust them so that's the final and really uh, one of the most important steps because if you don't if you just crank it all the way up you can literally just melt your speakers so you don't want to do that but anyway uh, only one outing on the um, Rockville uh, amp and the um, SCAR speakers 
and the bazooka subwoofer so as long as they continue to hold up I am absolutely happy with them if anything does happen I will post below or in the title that something blew up or no longer works but anyway middle of the line build but I'm happy with it really sounds good out on the water in fact like I said I got told to turn it down so anyway hope this helps you